Order. We now come to the next debate, which is free school meals. Dr. Roberta Blackman Woods. Thank you, Mr. Ilsley. And can I say what a pleasure it is to serve under your chairmanship? I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to speak about free school meals. Um, it's a subject that is uh, very close to my heart. Um, right at the start, I want to pay tribute to the Minister who played an important part in the campaign to highlight the importance of universal free school meals um, as she hosted a visit to Hull so we could learn more about their experience of a school meals pilot before it was prematurely and abruptly ended by the Liberal Democrats when they took over the council. I am also especially pleased that after uh, much lobbying, it has to be said, the Right Honourable Member for Normanton, the Secretary of State, agreed to fund a free school meals pilot in three areas, Newham, Wolverhampton and County Durham. I also want to thank uh, my honourable friend, the Member for Gateshead East and Washington West, for the role that she played too in getting this free school meals pilot. We were also very helpfully supported in our campaign by the GMB Union, by Unison and the End Child Poverty Alliance. Um, my mother was a school cook and so I think I've always believed that the quality of what children eat at school is extremely important. I watched, however, over the decades, particularly in the 1980s and 1990s, as successive cuts led to more and more school kitchens closing and a complete withdrawal of hot school meals in many areas of the country. So while I um, instinctively thought that Britain wasn't doing enough to support school meals, I really got the jolt to do something about it in Parliament following, <coughs> following a visit to Sweden in 2006. There I visited schools where school meal provision was something, um, well it was really, really good. It was good quality provision, it was universal and it was free. And then when I returned, um, I think the serious lobbying for something similar to happen here began. I think that experience of what happened in Sweden was really quite extraordinary because what teachers said, in fact, they were rather bemused that we were so interested in the free school meals because it was something that they just took for granted. And they very much said, when children go to school, we provide a desk for them or somewhere for them to sit. We provide a chair for them. We provide books for them, stationery. So why wouldn't we provide food as well? Because they need that to learn just as much as they need a desk. I think those of us pressing the case, however, have been helped enormously by Jamie Oliver's school meals campaign. His expose of how little we spent on school meals, the variation in quality and the lack of nutrition in some packed lunches helped raise the issue hugely and led, of course, to increased investment in school meals and to new nutritional guidelines. The government response to Jamie Oliver's campaign was very welcome, but it was not enough, as in most schools, including primary schools, only about half the children take school lunches. But I'd like to say to Jamie Oliver, if he's listening, and would like to help us extend the free school meals programme, then his help would be very, very much welcomed. But other issues have helped raise the profile of this issue too. We know that many children arriving at school um, don't have the experience or have not learned the social skills of ho at home of eating a meal around a table and neither have they developed the practical skills of using a knife and fork. Childhood obesity is becoming an increasing problem so it's very important that healthy eating is not only promoted at school, but it is experienced at school also. So I was very pleased that the government announced the pilots, but simply delighted that Durham County Council submitted a bid to be a pilot authority. 
David Williams, who is Director of Children's Services at Durham County Council, and Councillor Claire Vasey, who is the uh, Portfolio Holder for Children's Services, and their team deserve huge praise for putting this successful bid together and more significantly, perhaps, identifying the resources to implement the project in Durham. And I also want to congratulate them on the very successful celebration event for the Free School Meals pilot that they held with Steve Cram in Durham this morning. But Phil Barclay, Head of Finance, needs particular praise for the way in which the pilot has been implemented so that a free school meal meeting high nutritional standards has been offered to each primary school child in the county since September. As I said, the pilot only began in September, so it's just a few weeks ago. But the results are already staggering. Bearing in mind that the success of the bid was only announced on the 1st of May, the county had only four months to get kitchens ready to extend capacity in the system. This was achieved through a DCSF grant, money from the Primary Care Trust, big contributions from schools themselves, and in some cases the diocese, so that a fund of £3 million was put together to upgrade school kitchens. The lasting outcome is that most schools now have modern high-quality catering facilities. But the take-up figures are perhaps what are truly amazing about this pilot. Currently, 86% of children take up um, a school meal in the schools that are covered by the main county council contract. It's 90% for those schools operating outside the contract. The results last year were under 50% take-up. And the County Council is confident that even these very high figures will rise further. I'm extremely fortunate that some schools in my constituency are operating at 100% take-up, which I think is truly extraordinary. And I think credit must be paid to Taylor Shaw, the, con the main contractors, because they've done really well to concentrate mostly on the quality of the food that is produced, but they've also risen to the challenge of taking on more staff at very short notice. For those who are not yet convinced of the benefits of free school meals, and I'm sure there are not many people out there, but for those who are not, I shall just highlight a few of them. What is happening at the moment throughout the pilot areas is that children are receiving a hot, nutritious, free school meal at lunchtime in our primary schools. Take up, as I said, is high. Apart from the nutritional benefits, and there are many, there is no stigma any longer in taking a free school meal because all children have them. Teachers, and bearing in mind it has only been a few weeks, but teachers are already reporting better concentration levels amongst pupils in the afternoon. The economic benefits for parents are substantial, and this has been particularly important as this project has been launched in a period of economic downturn. Parents save £8.50 each week for each child. Many, oh, that's the saving, they're not receiving it, that's the saving that they get um, from not having to pay for the school meal. Many local parents have told me that the free school meal pilot has made all the difference in their family weathering the recession. Many families are saving £633 each year. That's families who have two children in the family who are at primary school. Also, much of the food is sourced locally, and so local businesses and farmers are benefiting too from this programme. And as I said, additional jobs have been created also. 
But as we're all terribly concerned about climate change at the moment, we should note that food miles are also being cut, and this has, as I say, enormous benefits to the environment. And perhaps the last point is that children are learning social skills and are learning to eat healthily, and hopefully this will help us tackle obesity in the future. I want to take just a minute or two to um, read out some statements that have come in very recently from some of the head teachers in the schools. Pauline Warren, who's the head teacher of Sacriston Junior, says they have 175 pupils on roll. 154 of them are having a free school meal. Before free school meals, uh, before the pilot was introduced, they were serving only 58 hot meals. She says everyone at the school is very enthusiastic and positive. They all think it's a wonderful idea. It's good that children can try the food and see if they like it before asking for a full helping. They say that lunch times are now a more sociable event and that children are all having the same meals and sitting down together. Judith Hodgson, who's the head teacher of Witten Gilbert, says they have 100% take up. They have no packed lunches any, any longer coming into the school. Interestingly, they have clean plate awards. And because there is a competition, um, children are encouraging each other to um, eat up all of their dinner because tables can also get a prize. I think this is a really, really good addition to the pilot and not one that we had thought of beforehand. Again, they report um, very, very positive comments from the children and from their parents and children are saying that they're very much enjoying the meals. The school says that the cook is absolutely fabulous and she's coped extremely well in getting to grips with the new kitchen and everything is working smoothly. Everyone from lunchtime supervisors to staff and pupils are now converts. They very much like the new system and she concludes by saying, but the really good thing is that children are eating a healthy meal at lunchtime. And many teachers are doing so as well. So we need the scheme to continue. I know it is being evaluate, eva evaluated, and some people will say we need to wait for the results of the evaluation. And I do indeed think it's a great pity that we didn't get the Hull evaluation before the Lib Liberal Democrats cut the scheme. But I hope my Honourable Friend, the Minister, will join me, even at this early stage, in pressing the Chancellor to make money available so that local authorities who wish to do so can bid into a fund to extend and continue this programme. I know that this is not a good environment to be asking for more money. With expected savings on the way, or savage cuts, depending on who it is you're talking to, um, it's probably too much to ask for the £1 billion to extend this programme to all local authorities. But at least a fund that would allow local authorities um, to bid for some money would be a start. We know that the government must do more to tackle child poverty and I know that ministers are making a commitment to this. But I think that ministers have overlooked to a very large extent the role that free school meals could play in an anti-poverty programme. They could be one very effective measure of helping to tackle child poverty. Extending free school meals are supported by the End Child Poverty Alliance and I'm very pleased, as I said earlier, about their support. In particular, though, they back the case for extending the programme 
to those in receipt of child tax credits. I think this may be a start, and it is something which I would like the government to have a look at. But I think the universality of the system, as it is currently operating in the pilot areas, is the key to its success. And I hope the Minister agrees and that she will join me in pressing the Chancellor to extend this programme to other local authorities and to extend it beyond the time frame currently allowed in the pilot areas so all the parents in my constituency and others who have so warmly welcomed this programme will know that it has a sound future. Thank you. Anna Johnson. And uh, I'd first of all like to start by congratulating my honourable friend for securing this debate. And um, like uh, my honourable friend mentioned that she visited my constituency a while ago to look at the experience in Hull um, through a far-sighted Labour uh, council that decided they were going to have free school meals in their primary schools and special schools for a three-year period and have an evaluation by Professor Cahoon at, at Hull University. But unfortunately, as my honourable friend has mentioned, that uh, pilot was cut short because I think of the short-sightedness of a Lib Dem council that came in and abandoned the project. So um, it's very unfortunate that we don't have that evidence to look at. But I'm going to come on and talk a little bit about the pilots that we do have now and hopefully the evidence that we can draw from the experience of those pilots. And also, I just wanted to mention, Mr Ilsley, I too visited Sweden uh, just last month and spoke to school students about school meals and... They, I, I can concur with my, my honourable friend's comments about how they see school meals and how it's a, a very natural part of the, the school day and all children um, take school meals in Sweden. So one of the most important lessons that we can teach our young people is how to look after yourself and how to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And as my honourable friend will know, a large part of that is down to eating a healthy diet. And the consequences of not having such a healthy diet are evident. We know that an unbalanced diet not only has a direct effect on children's schoolwork, but also affects the way that they behave in the classroom and at home. And currently 1.5 million children are overweight or obese, meaning they are in danger of developing serious medical, medical conditions in later life, including type 2 diabetes, heart disease and cancer. We need to ensure that our young people know the value of eating healthy food and that they choose to eat a sensible and balanced diet. And my department is taking steps to ensure that healthy school lunches are a cornerstone of our education system. And generally, the Labour government has recognised the importance of improving school food. And that's why we have backed a significant investment, £650 million between 2000 and 5 and 2011 and this funding has been used to help support the cost of healthy school lunches to help build or refurbish, refurbish kitchens and dining facilities for the excellent catering staff around the country and to better support the development of training centres for the school food workforce and our recently introduced tougher nutritional standards for school food will ensure that all primary secondary and special school pupils now have access to a balanced meal, including lots of vegetables, salad and fruit. And it's also worth mentioning that we have schemes working with the Department of Health to ensure at Key Stage 1 we have fresh fruit in our primary schools. And many schools also operate breakfast clubs to help that whole um, issue throughout the day of children having access to good, healthy food. Turning now to the Free School Meals pilots, as my honourable friend will know, this September, my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State, launched our two-year free school meals pilots in Durham, Wolverhampton and Newham. And these pilots, backed up by £20 million worth of funding from my department and the Department of Health, 
offer free nutrition, nutritionally balanced meals to all primary students in Durham and Newham. And in Wolverhampton, we are testing extending the eligibility rules for pupils whose parents receive working tax credits and have an annual income of up to £16,040. And I uh, recognise what my honourable friend says about looking at the tax credit system, and I'm hoping the experience in Wolverhampton will, will uh, let us uh, make a decision um, at the end of the pilot to see whether that's had an effect on take-up. When I visited the launch of the pilot um, in Newham with the Secretary of State in early September, it was very clear to me what an impact those meals were already having on the children and on the parents. And just yesterday, I was in Wolverhampton, and I saw for myself the pilot scheme in a secondary school, and what was happening there was that take-up was increasing. In both Newham and Wolverhampton, there are very positive attitudes and a very keen interest around these pilots. And this keen interest in the pilots was shared with many local authorities who applied to take part in, the, in these pilot projects. But it is important to note that local authorities already have the power themselves to innovate and introduce free school meals if they so wish to do in their area. And I understand that under pressure from a Labour budget motion, Islington Council is about to do the same. So I'm extremely pleased that my Honourable Friend's constituency of Durham is taking part, and I would ask uh, my Honourable Friend if she would pass on my congratulations to everyone who's been involved in making sure the pilot started on time. I'm very grateful like to my friend for giving way. Um, I wonder if she would find it um, helpful um, to visit um, my constituency in Durham, and in particular to visit some of the schools that have 100% take-up um, of free school meals, just to see um, how effective they are locally. Thank you, Mr. Rosie. I'm delighted to uh, receive that invitation, and actually in my speech later on I was going to say that I would be very pleased to come and see for myself, having visited Newham and now Wolverhampton, I'm, I would be delighted to come and see some of the primary schools in, in Durham and talk to the teachers and to the pupils to find out what, what they think about it. Um, we started the pilots, obviously, because we wanted to have robust and independent evaluation of the benefits of a child eating a free, healthy school meal. We wanted to see whether having a free, healthy meal would reduce childhood, childhood obesity, change eating habits at home, and whether school standards would rise. And this information will lead us to a decision about the value for money in extending the project. The, the design of the pilots focuses on encouraging healthy eating habits in children from a young age in primary schools and throughout, throughout their time at school, which will not tempt them to eat junk food by the time they reach secondary school. Generally, I just want to say something about the uptake of free school meals in this country. As my honourable friend knows, the key to free school meals is that both our children and parents are fully behind it and that the school is actively promoting healthy food and the benefits of a school lunch. And there is clear evidence that while most children who are eligible for free school meals do take school lunch, too many do not. Figures from the January 2009 annual school census shows that 16% of nursery and primary school pupils are known to be eligible, but only 13.6% take them up. And 13.4% of secondary school pupils are known to be eligible, but only 10.3% take them up. I feel that it is vital that schools work with their local authorities and the school food trust to ensure that those eligible for free school meals know they are. Um, would my, um, my honourable friend accept that one of the reasons why children do not take up free school meals is because they do feel that there's a stigma attached to them and that unfortunately too many schools t still single out in some way that is different to the others, those who are having free school meals and that actually what is so important about the pilots is that they're universal. Everybody has free school meals, and that's why we've seen this extraordinary rise in the take-up figures. 
Thank you, Mr. Osley. Um, I think it's clear from my own experience in my own constituency of, of Hull North that when we had the free school meals in primary schools, that was exactly what parents and teachers were saying to me, that the stigma that had been attached in the past had gone. So I think that's going to be a very important part of looking at the success of these uh, pilots in Durham and uh, Newham. Now, um, in the pilots, we've obviously focused on areas of the country where there are uh, areas of deprivation and low incomes. And we've done that on the basis that we feel those areas are most likely to benefit from the extension of free school meals. They're a great way, as my honourable friend has already uh, talked about, of putting money back into the pockets of the hardest hit in the current recession and improving children's health and fitness. But we recognise that not all children in the pilot will be from low-income families. We want to improve the health and educational benefits for all children, not just children from a low-income background. Not all children who can afford school meals eat them, so it's right that the pilots do test to see if offering free school meals helps children across, across a spectrum of families. And turning now to the, to the early evidence of the uptake of meals in the pilot, um, as my honourable friend said, it's only since September that these have been in operation, but already very positive feedback on how the pilots are being received in local areas. And as my honourable friend has already um, explained, in Durham, the average school lunch take-up is estimated to be around 80%, with, I understand, around 10 schools achieving 100% take-up compared with around 49% before the pilot started. Members of the opposition parties did raise objections at the start of these pilots that many of the areas would not be ready for these pilots because of the lack of kitchens. Now, it's clear to me from my honourable friend's experience in Durham and these statistics that these objections that were raised uh, were unjustified. I, I wonder if she would accept that I think the local authority did a really amazing job in getting the partnership together to put money into the school kitchens because um, I, I thought it was quite far-sighted of them to involve the primary care trust and the schools themselves and the diocese um, because they all have an interest in children's health. I think, I think that's absolutely right, and I pay, pay tribute to the local authority, the diocese, and the PCT, because they're all key players in this, in making sure that we can deliver healthy school meals for our, for our pupils. There are excellent signs that both children and families think that these meals are worth having, and one that my honourable friend, I think, should take particular credit for, as she's fought so, uh, so hard uh, to get the free school meals pilots. And I'm very pleased, indeed, that, they, that one of them is in Durham. And I'm, as I said earlier, I'm very much looking forward to visiting Durham, hopefully later in this year. In terms of future rollout, I would now like to just turn to the issues outlined um, in my honourable friend's speech regarding the next, next steps for these pilots. And I'd like to be clear, at this stage, we are not making any decisions about the future rollout. We will be testing each pilot throughout its two-year process and we'll be looking for the very full evaluation to be carried out by the National Centre for, so for Social Research. This evaluation will determine whether the additional benefits resulting from the pilot offer value for money in terms of cost to schools. And it will also determine whether the current eligibility rules are right. So in closing, I would again like to congratulate my honourable friend for securing this debate today. I think that we can all agree that the health of our students is of the utmost importance. And I'm glad that we are taking steps towards a healthier lifestyle for all our pupils and students. Steps that are already showing a very positive reaction. It's important now to monitor the pilots closely and ensure that a full evaluation is taken at the end of the two years. And we need to keep the issue of good food for our children and young people high up on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Again, um, I was just wondering if it actually made sense to have the evaluation um, completed before the end of the two-year pilots, because um, if local authorities aren't given a signal early on about whether the, the pilot is going to continue or their scheme is going to continue, uh, it could um, bring the whole scheme into jeopardy. 
It's certainly my intention as the Minister for School Food to keep a very careful eye on the evaluation that's coming through during the two years and we'll be certainly looking to, uh, to use that as effectively as we can in discussions with local authorities. But I do look forward to working closely with my honourable friend on this issue as we continue to monitor the success of these pilots.